In this video, we will demo the simplified item creation and editing flow. To get started, log in to squareup.com, then click on Items and Inventory, Items, Item Library, and then click on Create Item. Now you can see the simplified item creation flow. This page is laid out into two columns. In the first column, it generally follows the life cycle of the item, starting with defining what the item is, then defining how much of the item you have, and then defining how it's sold, fulfilled, and shared online. The second column, however, is about organizing the item into categories and defining where it's sold. Now let's demonstrate creating a typical prepared food and beverage item. I'll create a Caesar salad, and I will give it a kitchen nickname, which is how this item will show up on printed order tickets and on the KDS devices. Now I'll give it a price of $12 and I'll generate a description using artificial intelligence. This description looks good to me, so I'll insert it. And I'll also add an image from my image library. The taxes are automatically set, and now I'll add nutritional information, including calories, dietary preferences, and food allergen information. In the next section, I can see that the salad will be available at both of my locations. And next, I wanna make sure that I sell this salad in a small and a large size. So to do so, I will add variations. I'll name the first variation small and the second variation large. And I'll price this one at 15. Lastly, I'll add modifiers for this item, including salad toppings. Now I've added all the most essential attributes for this item, and I'll hit save to create it. In this next example, we'll show how to set up a location-specific price override for an item. First, click on the item that you want to add a price override for. You'll see that this citrus salad is sold for $8.50. To add a location-specific price override, click on the three dots inside of the price field, then click on Add Price Override. From here, select the location that you want to choose for this price override, and then input the new price for the item. Click Save, and the location-specific price override is now applied at that location. Let's say that you sell a sweater that sells in a variety of sizes. If you sell other items in those same sizes, you can save time in the future by creating variations using an option set. To do so, scroll down to Variations and click Add. Give your set a title, such as Sizes. Now you can add the option set values, such as your small size, medium, large and extra large. Click done to save these variations onto the item. Now you can see that this item uses the sizes option set. To edit the values in the sizes option set, click on sizes and you can update the variation options here. In the future, if you create items with these same four sizes, Simply apply the sizes set to that item to quickly generate the variations for it. Next, we'll show how to create many variations at once using option sets in the simplified item creation flow. To get started, click Create Item. In this example, we'll create a sweater priced at $50. Next, scroll down to the Variations section and click Add. To select an option set that you've already created, click into the Set Title field and select among your saved option sets. I've already created apparel sizes and apparel colors, so these are shown here as options. I'll click on Apparel Sizes, and now you can see that sizes extra small through extra large will be applied to this item. 
Now I'll click done. You can also select all the variations and complete bulk actions such as updating price. You can also update unit cost and photos. From here, you can add stock for each of the variations by clicking on initial stock and typing in the amounts that you have at each location. Now I'll click save and the item is created. Now let's create a t-shirt item that uses both the apparel sizes and apparel colors option sets that I'd created previously. First click create item. Let's give this item a name. Now scroll down to the variation section. Click add. Then click on set title and select the first option set. To add a second set, scroll down and click add another set. From here, Add your second option set, such as apparel colors, and then click done. Now you see a review screen, which shows the combination of sizes and colors that will get created. Click create. And now all of the variations combining sizes and colors are shown in the variation section on the item. Click show more to see all of the variations. Just as before, you can select all the variations and perform bulk updates, such as prices, unit costs, and vendor. Now we'll show how to set up an item that is sold with multiple units. To get started, click Create Item. We'll name this item Burgundy Wine. And it's priced at $30 per bottle. To sell this item with multiple units, click on the unit drop down selector again, and then click sell multiple units. In this case, I want to sell this wine by the bottle and by the case, so I'll click case and define the unit conversion as one case equivalent to 12 bottles. Then click done. When you scroll down to the unit section, you can now see that the item is sold both by the bottle and by the case, and you can price the case appropriately. You can further customize your item with settings that are located inside the collapsed sections near the bottom of the item page. If you scroll down, you'll see there are now three sections that are collapsed by default called Manage Checkout, Fulfill Orders, and Optimize Search and Sharing. In the Manage Checkout section, you can see settings for customizing how the item is sold via point of sale and online. In the Fulfill Order section, you can set up item attributes such as how long it takes to prep the item, what kind of fulfillment methods you use to fulfill orders to customers containing the item. You can select whether the item contains alcohol and define how much the item weighs for shipping purposes. And in the last section, you can customize how the item appears in search engine results and how the item appears on social media links. Updating inventory is now even easier with the simplified item creation and editing flow. To get started, I'll create an item called Sweater and I'll give it a price of $50. And now I'll scroll down to the Manage Inventory section. My demo business here has two locations, one in Soho and West Village. And to add initial stock for this item, it's as simple as clicking into this field and adding the stock amounts for this sweater at both of my locations. Now I can click Save. And in the future, when I have stock updates to input for this sweater item, I can scroll back to the Manage Inventory section, and you'll see that there's a slightly different treatment for on-hand inventory. If you click on this dropdown, you can select among the different stock actions, such as stock received, inventory recount, damage, theft, loss, and restock return, and then make your updates to the inventory. 
In this example, let's receive 10 more stock for this sweater and click done. Now you can see that there are 30 sweaters on hand at Soho. Now I'll click save and the stock adjustments are completed. To update inventory for an item with multiple variations, first click on the item, then scroll down to the variation section. To update stock for a variation, click on the blue text in the on hand column. This opens the variation modal on the inventory tab. Then the process is the same as for a single variation item. Click on the field in the on hand column to open up the stock popover. From here, you can select among stock actions and update your stock amounts. So in this example, I've added five stock for this t-shirt at Soho. Click done and you can see that you have five available on hand. Square supports tracking stock or managing availability. For a prepared food and beverage item like a caprese salad, it's more appropriate to manage availability. In this example, stock tracking is enabled for this caprese salad, but we actually want to measure by availability, not stock tracking. To change this, click on the three dots next to the on hand stock amount for each location, then click on change tracking and switch to track by availability. You can repeat these steps for both locations and now the item is using availability instead of stock tracking. To mark the item as sold out, simply click on the blue text that says available and you can toggle the item to sold out at that location. Then click done and click save to save the edits. Side, go.